St. Albans, England, August 10th, 1315. The servants of King Edward II go out into the streets looking for food, as they always do when the court travels. But there is none. The rains had come in 1314 and not stopped. Grain could not ripen, harvested grain grew moldy, hay could not dry, and thus the livestock went hungry, sickened, and died, and no one in the town has anything to spare, even at three to four times what it had been worth a year before. Edward is informed that there will be no food tonight. And this is shocking. Unheard of, even. What kind of world is this where the King of England cannot find bread? Well, it's a world created by forces he cannot control, but which will come to control him. For as the rains continue and harvest after harvest fails, the nobles of England will begin to wonder if God is visiting his wrath on Edward II. The Little Ice Age has just given a small push to a chain of events that will dethrone a king. Thanks so much to Factor for keeping us history-loving beans well-fed fast without resorting to frozen food. The Great Famine of 1315 to 1317 was one of the most extreme crises to hit Northern Europe. Britain, Scandinavia, the Low Countries, Poland, and Germany were hit worse, but every place north of the Alps felt at least some impact. It was particularly dire in countries bordering the North Sea, where rain began to pour in the winter of 1314 and continued on and off for two years regardless of season. Cool summers, too, threw off the harvests. Not only did the rain drown and batter the grain, but the wet weather meant it couldn't fully ripen and rot set in. Crop yields dropped to a third or a quarter of what they'd been during a normal year, and bread prices spiked to unaffordability. This caused a cascading hunger crisis that would last for 12 years, as people ate the portion of their grains they usually saved to replant the next year's crop. Livestock, too, was devastated, with winter temperatures plunging so cold they had to be brought inside homes to survive. Rain spoiled the hay, and other plants generally used for livestock feed were repurposed to feed farmers and their families. Older people gave up food, voluntarily dying so that the young could survive. Even the usually profitable English wool trade was rocked, as sheep could not be shorn without dying from hypothermia. Meanwhile, the underfed cattle, with their compromised immune systems, fell to blight. And with no feed for the farm animals, farmers turned to eating them instead, slaughtering their breeding stock in the name of survival. But then when the livestock ran out, they turned to other sources of meat. Dogs, cats, bird eggs, and if rumors were true, each other. One account tells of prisoners killing and eating a new convict that arrived in their cell. Rumors also spread of children being abandoned in the forest when their parents could no longer feed them, or being tempted inside houses with offers of food, and then cannibalized. Of course, if that sounds familiar, it might be for a good reason, because it's been theorized that this is the era that Hansel and Gretel, a story combining these elements, dates from. England, the best documented of the areas hit by the famine, lost around 5% of its population, though in other places like Poland it was much likely higher. Now, here's the thing about the Little Ice Age. If you were living through it, you probably wouldn't connect the dots about what was happening. With no way to measure, record, and compare temperatures over various years, it was impossible to see a cooling trend. Similarly, even kings didn't have a particularly good idea of what was going on climatically in their lands, and this is all complicated by the fact that between these colder stretches, things might be more moderate or even warm for a few years. Today, we can look at the cores and samples taken across Europe and see that there were more cold years than were standard before, and that they were clustered closer together. But back then, people only really noticed when extreme weather events or unusual patterns became known, and they attributed them not to climate, but to God. Which, of course, was particularly bad for King Edward II, since the famine itself and his ineffective efforts to fix food prices was seen as God having turned against him. This, among other crises such as failed wars with Scotland and France, would eventually lead him to being deposed and murdered in 1327, which overall is how the Little Ice Age worked. While the changing climate did not directly cause many historical events, it would be a key factor in providing a push here or a nudge there. It would cause crop failures, which became famines, which then played a role in changing historical events. And one of the most crucial things it pushed along was the Black Death. Like many things in this series, how much cooling temperatures assisted the bubonic plague outbreak of 1347 is debatable. 
On the more extreme end, one theory holds that the changing climate triggered mass migrations of people in Eurasia, helping spread the disease initially, while a more accepted version is that the cold, wet weather of the Little Ice Age kept Europeans indoors and in close proximity, explaining why these colder regions in Europe saw an estimated death rate as high as 60%, whereas in the Middle East, it was only 25 to 33%. However, the most accepted version is that the malnourishment of the famine years weakened the population of Northern Europe, priming it for mass mortality once the bubonic plague arrived. One society the Little Ice Age directly destroyed, however, were the Norse colonies on Greenland. Settled in 985 CE during the Viking expansion, which you can see our series on here, Norse colonists had lived in Greenland for four centuries, hunting walrus for the valuable ivory prized in Europe. Yet as the climate began to cool, the lifeline between Greenland and Scandinavia became more tenuous. By 1400, the sea ice that had melted during the medieval warm period returned, making it difficult to import food or export walrus ivory to Europe. Plus, winters there were worse than in Europe. Livestock had to be kept inside for months and were so weak they had to be carried to the fields again. It's also possible the freak storms, now more common, killed a large percentage of the men who hunted for seal and walrus, which made up 80% of the colonists' diet. And meanwhile, Europeans had discovered African elephant ivory and were no longer impressed by walrus. The last we know of the colonies is a letter mentioning a marriage in 1408, then they're gone from history. Archaeology has suggested that the colonists left quietly and regularly, trickling home rather than sailing in a mass exodus. But within a few decades, the settlements were abandoned. But they would not be the last colony to fall to the Little Ice Age. In fact, the infamous disappearance of the Roanoke colony may have also been triggered by climatic shift, since it appears the years its people vanished in the 1580s coincided with the worst drought in 800 years. However, while the Little Ice Age may have killed that American colony, it spurred exploration of the New World as well. For while grain and livestock suffered on land, in the Atlantic, a similar drama was playing out in English and Dutch fishing fleets. The codfish was a staple in medieval Europe. Available in great numbers and practically unable to spoil once salted and dried, it was common on both royal tables and as military and ship rations. Yet, cod could only live at a certain band of temperature, and when their standard haunts off Britain became too cold, they began to migrate further and further out into the Atlantic. English, Dutch, and Scandinavian fishermen chased them, adopting new kinds of high-sided, stable ships called doggers to deal with the increasingly rough seas and long distances. They chased the cod all the way to the Grand Banks and to the coast of the New World, where the fish was so prized that in 1602, one explorer ran across a place that they were practically abundant and named it after the fish, Cape Cod. Yet these early colonists would not meet an environment like that of Europe, and the Little Ice Age would make that even more extreme. Observers were floored by the wild swings in weather, like in the winter of 1641, when Massachusetts Bay froze so solid that carriages could drive across it. Meanwhile, summer heat waves killed settlers in Maine, which I don't know if you've ever been up there, but that's just bonkers. Of course, these swings were not confined to the coasts of the New World. Drought hit South America, wet weather pummeled Australia, and sea levels dropped across the Pacific Islands. And things would only get worse. So join us next time as Jamestown starves, mobs blame poor weather on witches, and a volcanic eruption plunges global temperatures even further toward freezing. Of course, if by this point you are sick and tired of all things frozen, then may I suggest a fast and fresh meal from Factor. Factor is my favorite ready-to-eat meal delivery service that's been sending me tasty meals each week for over a year now so that I never have to worry about what I'm having for dinner. Every meal is ready in two minutes with no prep, no mess, and my absolute favorite, no cleanup. It's just good food ready when I have time to eat it. It really is that simple. Actually, full admission, I do look forward to browsing their weekly rotating menu like a bit of a food nerd. And because they have so many meals to choose from, I can always be sure that everyone in my household gets the food that they love fast. Like this week, I devoured their twist on an old favorite of mine. Chicken pot pie pasta with cauliflower and broccoli. <laughs> oh yeah. And with all the time I saved, I was actually able to put away all of my Halloween decorations before Thanksgiving this year. <laughs> you can give Factor a try for yourself at factor75.com or by clicking the link below. And if you use the code extra credits 50, you'll get 50% off your first Factor box. Then you'll be getting fast and flavorful meals at a deep discount while also supporting us making the shows you love. So click right here to check out Factor. And once you decide on dinner, why not check out our next video here? Look at that dinner and a show the biggest bean thanks to Ahmed Ziad Turk Angelo Valenciana Arcolite Games Dominic Valenciana Izzy Coin Joseph Blame Kuyakoy and Michael Hoggett for being our legendary patrons 